ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are live for the thousands of nuggeteers in attendance. Okay, possibly one family member. And the millions of nuggeteers watching from around the world. Okay, maybe five from Wisconsin, two from Illinois, and one from Texas. Temporarily Offline Radio presents Ham Nuggets. The fastest hour in Ham Radio YouTube. 60 minutes is 60 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And now... Here is your host, the man, the myth, the legend, if even in his own mind, KM9G, otherwise known as T.O. Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to the show. This is Steve KM9G, and I want to get a couple of things out of the way right at the very beginning of tonight's episode. So first off, a great big thank you to all the moderators that hang out in the chat and help keep things moving along smoothly and dropping links when called upon and all of that other wonderful stuff. You guys make this even easier for me to do than, than the hardness that it is. I don't know. And second, this was all Jim's idea tonight. So if this goes off the rails... <laughs> Blame that guy right over there. We are not going two and a half hours, man. No, no. no. How are you doing tonight, Jim? Good, man. Good. How's it going? It is going pretty good. I um, I had. What's the weather in like in Luck, Wisconsin today, my friend? I don't know. It was like it's eighty-two here. Sunny. It's 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 like low forties. It snowed this oh. morning, and then it's sunny. <laughs> it snowed Mud here season. in twenty seventeen, I think. Yep, yep, yep. So. uh <laughs> I had a working pie star before Jim came up with the idea for this stream, and I I haven't seen DMR since. So <laughs> let's see if we can get this thing working again tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some links in the description of the video down below of where to get um, pie star, where to get an MMDVM that works. I've mentioned this before on a couple of streams, and I did a couple of videos about it. If you go on eBay, heaven help you, it's totally fine to do that but you are going to be your own quality control. So you go on eBay and you get yourself an MMDVM hat, just the little part that goes on top of your existing Raspberry Pi. There's some quality control issues. Nobody's checked that thing out. You might be getting it for five or 10 bucks and, and thinking you're getting a deal. And you might actually wind up getting a really good deal. A couple of my friends have gotten really good deals. I went through five boards before I got one that actually worked. So I didn't save any money. And one of them, I did a video on my channel where I took a knife to a solder trace and cleaned it up. And that one is working. And fixed but, it. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to do that. I mean, I realize the thing's only like five or 10 bucks, but there should be some just minor amount of, hey, this thing actually does the thing that right. you paid for it to do. And, I, and I'd be happy... Or, I'd be happy paying the extra dollars for that. So the link that I have in the description has an MMDVM hat that comes with a Raspberry Pi, that comes with the case, that comes with the antenna, that comes with the SMA connector, that comes, that comes, that comes, that comes, that comes with all the stuff. And I want to say it's like 130 bucks, which by Raspberry Pi prices ain't too bad these days. Yeah, <clears throat> those things, when I bought my first one, it was like 100. And that was back in 2019. So if it's 130 like? today, then it ain't bad at all. Yeah, so uh, Kilo 5 in the bag. Congratulations, Mike and 8YO. What that means for those of you that are not on the POTA scene, that means that he has made 1,000 contacts, a Kilo, 1,000 contacts from a single POTA entity. And since he said Kilo number 5, that means he's made Holy five 1,000 contact sets. Mike, was that all the same park, 5,000 in one park, or was that five different parks? Very that's good. A, uh, that's a feat. That's a... And most of that was done during the FT8 off. So, <laughs> oh, I know when he was doing it. Yeah. You guys must have a park rich environment. I just, there's not anything super close to me, and I'm not driving all over the place. So, this is the the MMDVM. It's it's a case. It has the, the Dirk, pie thank in you. it. It has the pie hat in it. Thank you very much, Dirk. It has the antenna, and, and this one's fancy. It has an antenna that is an extendable whip antenna, and we're good to go on that. And then you're going to need a usb cable for power and you're gonna need some way to power it my big trick for powering this thing up is find your wi-fi router it probably has a usb port in it 
plug this thing in after it's all configured and ready to roll, plug it straight, straight into yep. your Wi-Fi router and forget that it exists. So I haven't seen this thing for like two years. Anything that has a USB port will work for that. Steve had a, I never thought of that. So that was today. I was today years old when I learned that trick. Your TV probably has a USB port. The downside to your TV is that USB port probably powers off when the TV's off. Yeah. So probably doesn't put out a whole lot of power, but you'll find out right away. It'll either work or it won't. And it doesn't cost you anything to find out. And if it doesn't work, then plug it back into the wall board that comes with it. But either way, you can stick it behind your couch. I mean, that that's still a pro tip. Also. Right. Well, there's probably um, stereos. I mean, there's USB ports on everything. You don't necessarily have to use the USB port for its intended purpose. You're just leeching electricity out of it. So. Yep. Stealing power. So I've got my screen shared up. Again, there are links in the description. I've got the Pi Star image that I downloaded from one of those links. And I have loaded it into a piece of software called Etcher. This is a very popular piece of software for writing out SD cards. There are a variety of them out there. If you're a Linux wonk like I am, you can also use DD. I guess that's for like direct disk, DD, Delta Delta. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to select a target. I'm going to pick the, the one that makes the most sense. I don't want to flash a two terabyte drive, which is indicated as being a large drive with a little teeny tiny Pi Star image. 30 gigs is... 32 gig card is also way too big for this. It's just the one that I have. You can probably get this thing down to two gigs or four gigs. What's my old one? Well, uh, so a thought about that that I would not recommend. Eight gigs. Eight would probably be the smallest SD card I would do for a couple reasons. Number one, at some point you're going to run out of log, spade, log space. And unless you're a Unix wonk and want to go in there and clear those out every so often. And then the second thing is those older, smaller cards, the the two and the four gig, which are probably fine to run it on for a little while, are also going to be slower SD cards, yeah. like class two and class four. And that may inhibit your end user experience. Yeah. Don's got a super pro tip for you. It will also work off of a USB oh, yeah. battery, phone charger, power bank type deal. And our, oh, yeah. our favorite 3D printing nerd, uh, Thump, has what's called a juice spot. I always get these things messed That's up right. a little bit. But juice spot. it's got enough room for your Raspberry Pi and 18650 battery and a battery charger. And the antenna is now internal to the 3D printed case that he designed. And I don't know if he put it on Thingiverse yet, but I, I know a way to get in touch with him. He's over on Toad's Discord. Plasma, you don't, you, you're not going to use a 32. I mean, if that's the, I don't know what the cost effective SD card to size. I think 32 is the smallest you can buy today. Heck, it may be. I don't know. Um, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. My point is just those little tiny ones like twos and fours are going to be class two or class four speed. Yeah. And that's yeah. no bueno anymore. It does make a difference. And you're going to, you will, you will over time destroy the SD card. Now they mount the file system read only, but Unix is still writing to it. It has to in a few places. And <laughs> they do have a limited lifespan. So a Ape says, go to Ape your favorite gas station, get your gas station sushi, get your gas station coffee, get your gas station gas if you can afford it, and your gas That's station right. SD card. That's right. With a charger. With a, with a, with a high power USB C charger from the gas station. I dream of a day when Raspberry Pis can be found at the cashier checkout stand <laughs> in your local gas station. Ooh, I'm getting giddy, man. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Ubiquitous. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some yep. colored light to play with now. Just just look at T oh, purple. Be fancy. Can you Love. add tan to that? So you can get like a swarthy, manly, I don't live in a Wisconsin blizzard. Yellow. Well, so it was it was rainy today and overcast. And I was doing a video conference call and I looked even more pasty white than I normally look. So I got <laughs> I got the, the low down desk lights. Let's get rid of those. I've got the, the side light that doesn't really matter all that much. And then we'll go red. Ooh. Oh, see, there you go. It's going to get dark in here pretty soon, though. <laughs> it's We're in the gray line right now. So hopefully you folks are playing along at home and this isn't just the, uh, the Jim and Steve play pie star by ourselves show, but if now, it if is you're... team replay, that's right. That's right. Now I will tell you that there's, there's other etchers. Um, Belina etcher is the one I use and Belina is on Mac and windows. I know, and I think it's available on Linux. 
Um, if you're like Dirk and Steve and want to go DD, which is old school and much kudos for that, you can use DD on Unix as well. And you can also on Windows, I think Rufus is one of them. And um, oh, is it WinBoot? Something like that. I can't remember. There's there's multiple apps that will burn SD cards. Um, Balena, B-A-L-E-N-A, Balena oh, yeah. Etcher is the most common, and it works fine. And it seems to be not spyware. So there's that. Because it works really well, and there's actually some some pre-built images in there somewhere that I never played with. Right. So step two, while we've still got the SD card in the machine, Etcher does eject it for you. So I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to plug it back in. There is this PyStar Tools section on pystar.uk, which I think the link is still in the description down below. for. And th that Wi-Fi is the official Twitter. PyStar site, too. PyStar.uk. Looks, looks just like it. So... What you can do here with this Wi-Fi builder is it's going to create the configuration file and get you to bypass about 70 or 80 different horrible, painful, slow steps. Um, I've got a video that details how to go through those steps if you like pain, but uh, this is the easier way. So I'm going to put in my SSID, and unfortunately, it does the password in plain text. So I'm not going to share that with you because, I don't know, you, you folks are going to drive by Luck, Wisconsin and find me. And I then, am totally um, going to drive around wargaming your Wi-Fi, man. War driving. That's what we called it back in the 2000s. I'm going to steal your Wi-Fi. I'm going to submit that, and then it's going to pop up because it's immediately going to create the file that you need. And all you need to do is put that in the boot partition, which should be mounted somewhere on your computer already on your SD card. All right. Now, Just slow right roll the, there. Did you put the SD card back in? I did. And it's has boot mounted up. Why don't it you show your screen? Is up. what I was. I eh, all right. Let me hide the password. We'll show the screen again. Steve, we don't care about your Wi-Fi password. I mean, unless I it's a dirty my word or something. It, it's a very dirty word. I've so, already got your password, man. It's no uh, problem. You're you're okay. I trust you. Some <laughs> of these fellers in the chat, like this guy that won't give his call sign out in public. Ske sketchy. Yeah. 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 So. uh there's this boot folder that mounted, and I also have the the two terabyte, the two two terabyte drives that I showed you earlier. One's actually red, and one is actually blue. So I call them red and blue because I'm very creative at naming things. And then there's the boot folder, which looks like a pretty standard Raspberry Pi boot image. I'm going to take this file that it automatically gave me to save, and I'm going to click the save button. And I got to remove it from the screen so Jim still can't see my password. So when you when you create that file off the Wi off the Pi Star website. It'll download it to your to your hard drive, and then you want to go in whatever file manager you use, Windows Exploder or the file manager in Linux or Finder in Mac OS, and drag that over to that boot partition, which I was hoping Stephen would show you the dragging part. Well, so what, what I what, did, James, was I saved it directly to the boot partition, so I don't need to do I, that. I know you fancy. I know you time. fancy. You fancy, but I'm just I'm step by step, amigo. That's right. Let's see. I made a Pringles cantina. Heck yeah. Right. That was the first occurrence of the word Yagi in my life. And I don't think that it, it wasn't actually a Yagi, was it? Um, Yeah, pretty much. Because I never I mean, made it's, one. It's a beam antenna, basically. But it didn't have like three elements sticking out of it. It was just the can. Um, It was the can with an element. The elements were inside it. The oh. can is actually was like beam forming or some okay. kind of fanciness. That was a long time ago when I was uh, not a ham radio nerd. I was just ham curious. So <laughs> Okay. All right. So, next so what that file is that Steve created, and he put it on that boot partition, what's going to happen is that's his Wi-Fi, so he doesn't have to do all the painful, horrible ways to get your Wi-Fi set up. I don't know if I actually so when he properly ejected that. Oops. It'll be fine. It'll be all right. That's what they say. It'll be all right. It, it ain't complaining. So when he boots, the Pi Star, the excuse me, the Raspberry Pi is going to boot up, and it's going to mount that partition, and it'll find that file and say, "Oh, here's my Wi-Fi settings." And then the next thing it's going to do, and it will take a couple minutes, so be patient, is it's going to expand the file system, so it actually will boot twice before you can get into it. And be careful when you put the SD card in that hole because you could miss and then it'll be rattling around on the inside. Yes. Uh, Jim told me about that. He, he warned me, but I already knew. 
because I might have done it. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> no, you didn't tell me that. So I just plugged it in, and it's got the fancy light display going on. It's the eye of Locutus. So <clears throat> it's going to boot up once, and if you have a monitor hooked up, you'll see this. It'll boot up once, and it'll flash some text on the screen that you may or may not be able to read. And then it's going to boot again. And it did some file system stuff on that first boot. And it takes, I don't know, a couple minutes. Longer Depends than you want to wait sometimes. Yeah. It always it comes down to size always. And um, and your speed. And then it will boot up. And once it boots up, then he should be able to web to um, the interface and log on. I see some blinking lights blinking again. Don I Gibbs, happen to know what IP it's by it's magical. Yeah, it is. Yes. And if it's ever been on your network, it should be the same IP address it used to be. Yeah. But we'll show you how to find that too. Jim, do you have a way of showing how you would find it? Now I, I can show how Linux nerds would do it. Go in your router and look at the DHCP list, which is what I would literally do here. Can you, you show just, yours while we're doing this? Um, yeah. Because mine's me, not up yet to show. Yeah. Let me uh, let me get logged into mine so y'all don't see my secret router logon sequence. Okay. Let's see. Share. Screen. <laughs> Greg's in the chat saying, watch for his password. Oh, oh no, boys. Negative. Skippy. Okay. It's his favorite peanut man. butter. No, it's not peanut butter. It's from the book. Carlos would know. Carlos would know. So on mine, this is a Ubiquity um, UDM Pro. It's the firewall and everything. And you're going to have something similar in a any kind of Soho router that you would have connected to your cable modem. And you're looking for DHCP clients. So what I'm going to do is come down here and say client devices. And then this is all the stuff connected to my network. And I would look for something called pi dash star, which is what it's going to come up as. And mine are already installed and they're not going to come up as that, but but you'll have something similar on your on your router. And you're going to go into the router, which is probably 192.168.1.1. And go to wherever it shows DHCP clients, and that's what you're looking for. Yes, and then you, if you're, if you want to go old school like Don, you can do a scanner, and it'll do the same thing this is doing. Yes, that is a true statement. And Adrian's asking, why don't we just hook an antenna up to a PC? And that, oops, is upside down. That is also possible. <laughs> we'll be talking about that on an upcoming episode. Um, yep. And then there's a way to do this without any radio at all. Yep. So you to do it from your cell phone. Yeah. So, for I'm example, waiting for mine. There is, there is my D Star hotspot, and then if I highlight this, it shows me the IP address over here. And then I can go to dstar.local if I didn't already know that. But I'm still watching paint dry over here, waiting for this thing to boot up. And I hope you guys are playing along at home. That's kind of why we're doing this in quasi real time. Step by step by step. Mm-hmm. See, we asked y'all in Nuggets the other day, on should Toad's we do Discord. it on Toad's Discord? Plasma, drop a link in there, buddy, or Ape, somebody, please. And I asked in Toad's, if we do an episode on Pi Stars, do, should we do it like in real time, or should we speed through the burning and booting and all that kind of stuff? And so Steve asked me that tonight before we started, and I said, well, the answer <laughs> is, we have three yeah. answers, yes, no, and I don't care. So but that's what my children say. Right. Yes. My what daughter do does dinner? that. Hamburgers? Yes. 
No, I don't care. Yeah. All right. So I have my IP address. And like I said, I already know what it is. But on a Linux machine, I can do sudo nmap uh, dash sp for scan by using ping. And then I can pick any address that's in my normal local network as the, the base and then give it a slash 24. And it'll ask me for my password. You guys can't see that. And it'll just go out and scan the network and it'll report back. And one of these doesn't look like something that I'm familiar with. If I go and look through this list and that will be the one that is in question. And for me, it is this one right here. Raspberry Pi Trading Company, uh, 192.168.200.104. And I happen to have it already entered in my host file as PyStar because I use Actually, this you, a bit. you don't have to enter it in your host file. You it don't, will, correct. It will show up. So I, I don't know what everybody's running. Steve is showing it the absolutely that way will work. If you type HTTP colon slash slash pi dash star dot local, it will work. Assuming you typed your own Wi-Fi password right in that uh, that whole um, WPA supplicant file thing, and that should work on Linux too, Steve. As far as I know, right? S say your statement again. <clears throat> well, you've already put it in your host file, and you know what the IP address is. But I think it will mm -hmm. it will find it without you doing that. I, I think it's based believe... off of your router. It's, Isn't it based off of your router? Your router automatically does that and then sticks it in its own DNS table? It's DHCP table. Whoever's providing DHCP will have a table, yeah. which, yes, would be your router. So you don't have to... I don't... On Windows, you do not have to do that. You can just go to your web browser and type pystar-local, and it will pop up. Hamdo's asking questions from the future. How do you set up multiple hotspots? Stay oh. tuned to future episodes of Nuggets. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for updates and news. Hold on, son. We'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So I am in. This is my dashboard. And this is what Don, your yes, it will look like. Yes, also. it will. But you need to rename them. You, can't, you, don't, you cannot have them all as the same name. I have four hotspots on my network, but I rename them when I set them up. I don't keep them. I've renamed mine D star DMR infusion. So. so this is where Jim takes over. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll be your, I'll be your fingertips, Jim. I'll be your, that? I'll be your muse. I'll be your huckleberry. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to go look at here is where it says controller software and controller mode. If you have a pie star like Steve's with one antenna, then mm -hmm. don't touch anything there. Leave it alone. It's going to be an MMD VM host and a simplex node. Under general config, that's your host name. If you think you're going to have more than one Pi Star set up, like I said, I have a DMR one, a Fusion one, and a DSTAR one, rename the thing to something other than Pi Star. Even if you think you're never going to have another one, rename it anyway because you might change your mind. And networky, networky computer crap, it will cause problems down the road. So rename it. Right. So, Steve's so James doing is asking DMR about one. M17. We will be doing an M17 stream also yes. again. Stay tuned, subscribe, ring the bell, yada, 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 YouTube stuff, and it'll happen. Yep. Um, shooter ready. This works for any of the digital voice modes, not just DMR. We're just using DMR tonight. DMR, D Star, M17, um, D25, NXDN, NXDN, P25. Fusion. It will even do it won't do Echo Link. Right. It will do Poxag too if you want to get your 1987 pager dork on. Um, so Steve's going to go to host name and rename it to DMR or whatever Steve was going to call it. Yeah, Pi Star. I already have that. Okay. Put in Steve's then, call sign. You no, don't put in Steve's call off. sign. Steve puts in Steve's. Night mnemonic nine gnome. The um, frequency you can follow, which is what I did, the ARL band plan for low power repeaters. Basically, and they have the code built in here, as long as it shows up in green, you're not walking on anything you shouldn't be walking on. You do want to make sure that if you type in a frequency and it turns red, change, because that means you're on a satellite um, downlink frequency and you could jack things up. Also be aware that some boards will not support VHF and UHF. Almost all of them support UHF. A few of them support both. 
<laughs> so another pro tip that came out of my local ham club, this is from Yo Slick in the chat. All of us got these Pi Star hotspots at the same time. We all set them to 443125. And then we have one at the Club Shack that is also set to 443125. So if I go to Bill's house or Bill comes to my house, our radios will instantly work through the hotspot. And if we go to the Club Shack, our radios will instantly work through the hotspot with no code plug changes because we're all friendly like. You're all on the same frequency. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then put in your latitude and longitude if you want to. And then under town, put in your town and your um, maidenhead locator in your country. Change the URL to auto. Yeah, and then just your, yep, your grid square. That will update the URL to your uh, Z page. Leave your node type set to private. You ain't running a public one unless you have a very specific use case. You're not going to run a public one. It doesn't mean that you can't use it. It just means it's not internet accessible and you don't really want that. So don't do that. Don't want to create loops. Um, actually, that wouldn't be the loop problem, but just don't do it for infosec reasons. APRS, you can turn APRS on and off if you want to. It's up to you. I'll leave that Steve on. needs to set his time zone. This is critical or network things will not work. So, yeah, I think Chicago is probably. Yep. And then he needs to change it to Merck in English and then apply the changes. And I think the way these boxes are set up, you have to apply the changes that you make for each box. Yes, individually. exactly. So I can't Very change this tip. one and then change this one because it'll only do the last one that I do. So I'm going to apply changes on that first box that we just did. Yep. And this could take some time. And the, you know, this will work on a Pi Zero 1.1, a 0W, which is what Steve's got here. My DMR hotspot is a 0W 1.1. And then Digital Analog Ham 2E0 UKH from the UK gave me a pro tip also. Take this MMDVM hat and this SD card and put them on your favorite Pi 3B Plus or Pi 4 and get them all installed and configured and running at high speed. Take the hat off, take the card out, stick it on your Pi Zero. It'll mm -hmm. boot up and it'll be just fine. Your your Wi-Fi MAC address will change, which means your DHCP address will change. But that's easy compared to how long it takes to apply these simple text file changes that we're doing right now. Right. Now, you can also um, edit this stuff all at one screen through the... Uh through the expert config, but I don't recommend that unless you really know what you're doing. So Phil's saying apply changes now updates all the boxes, and I have not run into that. We can try that. I don't... I think I've tried that, but he may be right. The other problem you'll have is that some of the changes will also reset your modem, too. <laughs> now we got the stopping services, starting services screen. So we have to wait for that. Which means you're almost there at this point. The modem section has been updated. Please reselect your modem. And we haven't actually selected a modem yet. So now Steve can set up what kind of digital voice mode he wants this to be. And this is also, um, we're not going to set the modem yet because this will reset it. So for this, Steve's going to pick DMR. And RF hang time and net hang time leave at their defaults. And that screen you have, um, that has a display. So if you want to turn that on, you need to set that. And I don't remember. We're going to try that. I think it's OLED. Hang on, let me get in mine. It is OLED. I just don't know if it's type 3 or type 4. Go with type 3. I believe that's correct. Type, type 3 or type 6. Sorry. Let me go with type 3. And then just hit apply. It is type three, Steve. Okay. But now I have a different layout. I'm using the uh, on seven LDS, not the G four. And it doesn't matter. It's just a different screen layout.
Yeah, and if you didn't know what type screen it is, you could Google it. And it probably says on the purchase link. Um, frequently it does. The one I got from Amazon was from uh, HKCM.com or something like that. And it was in China from Hong Kong, I guess, HK. And um, they had all that listed. And Tim and Ron are saying that Type 3 is the smaller size, one inch or smaller. Okay. All right. So now we've got DMR set for our mode. We've got our general config done. So go ahead and scroll down. It's actually still. Oh, it's thinking. still cooking. Oh. I was thinking in hindsight, I should have put this on my Pi 3B Plus to do this demo. Would have been. But this will also give folks an idea of just how slow this actually is going to be. Yeah, just understand the Pi Zero 1.1, which is what Steve's got, is what, 10 years old? 12? 700 megahertz single core processor. Yeah. So we're, we're talking 2002 vintage computing. The hamster's running as fast as he can, man. So Guys, we'll I'm trying to keep that. up looking at questions. So if you all got any, drop them in the chat. I haven't so seen any. This is this is my favorite uh, DMR handheld. This is the BTEC Anytone um, TYT. There's a couple of them that are all the same radio in a different skin. The reason why I picked the BTEC model is because the BTEC model comes with an extra battery. And then I'm playing around with this antenna. Look at this thing. What have you done? Is that a coat hanger? It's a handy talkie mag loop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right. Modem selection is not selected. All right. So we've got DMR set. We've got OLED type three set. We still have nothing on the screen. And I need to put in my DMR ID here, don't I? Yes, you do. Figure out what my DMR ID is. Hang on one second. I know if I if I click this, it's going to pop up on that screen if it's shared out. And if it's not shared out, then it's not going to pop up at all on that screen. All right. I have top secret access codes in my DMR config that I can't share with the public. Dude, you know, you can look them up, right? I know. Okay. You've been hanging around eight too much. Seven oh three one eight. And then I need to pick anything else in here. We need to pick the modem type. Yes, we got, want to go ahead and set that. And in the case of the Pi Star Hotspot, the MMDVM, it's going to be the STM32 MMDVM HS Raspberry Pi hat. Pro tip. As far as I know, right? Should be, I would guess, on that style hotspot. If you don't know what kind of modem you have, you can actually go to the command line and run a command and it will tell you what modem you have. So go to expert and go to SSH access, second row, right side, there you go. And the login is gonna be pi, no, it's gonna be pi dash star. star. Yep. Yeah. Pi dash star and the password is raspberry. Don't be telling them my password. So now y'all know Steve's password. <sighs> All right. And then the, the command com again? Pi star dash find modem. And hit it. And it'll tell you right on the screen. Pi star tools all start with Pi star dash. So just type in Pi star. Sorry, hit the wrong button. Type in Pi star dash and then hit the tab key twice. And you will you'll get a list of all the commands. And all there's the Pi star dash find modem. And you need to be root. So we do sudo bang, 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 bang. And we'll rerun the last command you entered as root. And it's not the STM32. It's the MMDVM HS hat version 1.4.17. So let's go back to admin. Oh, that's fine. You can do that. And it'll warn you because it'll just kill the SSH session. And see how his DMR is shown as red? That means that the Pi Star's unable to, <laughs> unable to make a connection. 
And then Ape wants to know, this is actually a really good question. Are these digital signals FM modulated? And the yes. answer to that is yes, they are. It's FM mode for radio, but inside of that mode, it's just a bunch of beeps and clicks and whistles that make up the, um, what's it called? That make up the, the digital transmission. So one of the things that doesn't make a lot of sense to a new ham and didn't make a lot of sense to me when I was getting into DMR is, why do I need this fancy hotspot thing and a DMR radio? And it's because the, the hotspot is listening for DMR. It's not doing any encoding or any decoding. It's just listening for what you're sending that's already encoded. And when Steve says encoded, he doesn't mean encrypted. He means Correct. encoded as in it's speaking French versus Polish versus German versus American versus Chinese kind of thing. Okay. And so now after all of that, I forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, it's Emma, that one up right there. So you can't then, get your Balfang UB5R and a hotspot and get on DMR. It doesn't work. You can get a Balfang RD5R, which is almost the same radio. Did you apply? I am going to apply now. Okay. And it seems to have just accepted that. Huh. Okay. It didn't like the apply button. I'm doing it again. It gets moody at times. Yeah, Ron, I just forgot. Thank you very much. Ron, that varies from PyStar to PyStar. On mine, which looks identical to Steve's, it's not that same modem. Now, if y'all get them at the same time from the same supplier, it probably is, but... Mine is the STM32 in mine. Did you not actually change your DMR ID? Oh, we I went did, out of that page. We went out of that page before you applied it. Mm -mm. Can't do it. Can't do it. Wait. We'll get it again. Jeremy, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many aspirin does it take to configure this radio? Yes. It's Steve's. Steve made a very valid point. If you have a faster Pi, it would be better. It runs fine. It, it it absolutely runs fine on this once you get through this. But this takes a minute for the screens to refresh. This isn't doing a full reboot, is it? No, no. Okay. It just that would be stupid. I don't know why it's taking it so long to do this thing, though. Because it's a Pi Zero, and you have the newest version on there. Oh, we have display. And there ain't no it? way that's going to focus. It says startup. Okay. Yay, there we go. <laughs> went, we don't have black. display anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you missed your chance. Okay. put that in but so we'll keep on moving because they said that we're allowed to keep on moving with this all right so what let's do we have keep on moving. next all right so let's let's get on um brandmeister so pick your um, dmr master and that should be bm 3102 united yep. states and then change that also yep and then you need to know your Brandmeister password in your self care. I'm hoping that part. was it. Okay. And then your Brandmeister network SSID is ESSID is going to be your DMR number plus a two digit sequence number afterwards. So if you don't know what it is, Steve, because you've already made one, just pick a number and roll on with your life. Okay. And then Brandmeister network enable. And we are done with that screen. So the, the rest of this stuff is for other things? Optional for other stuff. If you want to get fancy and add DMR plus and XLX stuff and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not um, going to do any color code stuff. 
color code you could change if you wanted to. What that's going to mean is when you configure your radio, you need to change your radio to match whatever color code. The Pi Star defaults to one, so there's there's no reason for you to change it. It's just a it's like a PL tone kind of thing. So WA seven PB is asking what talk group are we going in, and we're going to say eight six eight four seven, right? No, fifty two oh seventy four. What is this? It changed on us. Oh, nice. You oh you were out of pocket yesterday. Yeah, yes, we got yeah. we got D Star working, and we broke everything else. So I don't know what state it's in yet. I haven't messed with it since I've been home. And there's Ed right on cue. Thanks, Ed. Did you apply changes here, buddy? Because I don't see any have, of the rotating twiddle character up. There. I haven't yet. I was going through the rest of the config. I'm not doing mobile GPS. Don't have to worry about that. Um, firewall configuration. We don't need to make any changes there, do we? Nope. 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 Okay. And then Hold all on. of this stuff here is about Wi-Fi config, which is already working. And I don't have an auto AP setup. This is if you want to take your Pi Star mobile and have it be the source of internet. Which no, what well, no, weird. what that's going to do is if if you take your Pi Star to a different internet somewhere. So Steve set his for Lakeland monitoring station. If he took his over to my house, the SSID is Skynet, and uh, I'm a tool for movies, and um, his Pi Star would not connect. So it would go into AP mode after three or four minutes where he could connect to the Pi Star like it was a access point and it would default to 192.168, oh, 100.50 or 99.50 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you could connect to it from your computer or your phone as an AP and then configure it and reboot it to get it on somebody's Wi-Fi. And then I have a static video. It says close. I have a static video about how to do that portion of the config also to connect to the Pi Star's Wi-Fi and then give it your Wi-Fi settings and then reboot the Pi Star and then connect to it after you reconnect to your own network. Right. It's a it's a mental head game juggling act to do it. It's not impossible, but you have to remember where you are in the process and what network you're on and just just pay attention, take notes if you have to. And as always, you know, digital toads. On Discord, here on the to Toads you. Discord, yeah. Operators are standing by. Well, I don't know that I'd go that far. Sometimes I actually have to do real work during the day. Dirk, Dirk was, Dirk and um, uh, Ron and a couple other people were throwing out a whole lot of questions this afternoon or this morning, and I was like, "Sorry, guys, I got, I got things to do." I had my evaluation today at work, and my boss told me I need to be more personable. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You have absolutely zero personality, Jim. That's right. Well, there's there's a story behind that, which I'm not going to share with everyone, but I just mentally inside my head, I was rolling my eyes and calling him an idiot. But, okay, so we made this change, and then we also made the Brandmeister changes, which show up right here. It looks like it kept it. So, so but I did not keep your SSID, boxes. but... Maybe that was an update, because I think I tried that one time, but it's been a while, so I don't know. Yay, it works. Cool. Which SSID did it not keep? Did you not set a DMR SSID to like five or something? Uh, it's, not, it's not set. Yeah, because it didn't know my number. I changed the number while I also changed that. So let's do that. Okay. Any other changes we need to make on this page, or I got to sit through that again? We already went through that whole screen. Gotta yeah, sit through it again. do it. Do it. Just do it. Drink. Drink now. So I am working ready. on... I, I treat all people how they deserve to be treated when you work around muggles and mundanes all day. It's it's hard. Treat a duchess like a flower girl. I'm a people person. I'm a people person. I take the specs to people. So I'm working on this for upcoming episodes of Nuggets and Coffee and Ham Radios and other live streams <laughs> that we do. And you'll see that there's some famous favorite words on there. Moxon, Flex, Amp. Dingus for Jim, DMR for tonight, Toroid for Ape, Sun. And so uh, right. we'll have some bingo cards coming up here in the future. Oh, you need to add that SDR and Mercury. There's a couple of Don words. Absolutely, Mercury should be in there. And then um, what is it? What is it? The Sun SDR? Oh, well, he was Hermes Light for a SKT. while. Yeah, he was. 
can't can't be all about that. We gotta have some other people in there. Which Pi 3B or a Dell Inspiron 1.3 gigahertz or 200 gigahertz? Oh, I have that's an excellent each. question. So the problem you'll have, yeah, the Dell would be better. The problem you're going to have is you have to have a card that translates from on radio frequencies and takes that and does the MMDVM function. So if you can find a USB dongle, you yeah, actually he can. We that's an upcoming show. Never mind. There you go. Shut your mouth, about those. <laughs> <laughs> Stay there's, tuned, there's, everybody. There's two or three options you have on that. Yes, you could absolutely do that. Is it any cheaper? Mm, it's about the same price. You can get the dongles much easier than you can buy a pie. If you have an old machine sitting around that you don't mind burning the electricity to run it, it'll work. I'm I'm just going to put this out there. Cheap and ham, while those two words are seen together frequently, don't actually really go together. This is yeah. not a cheap hobby. Um, yep. No. All right, so we're done with the with the main page of the configuration. Where to next, Jim? Uh, let's go look at our dashboard and see if we have greenness. We have greenness. Fabulous. Awesome. All right. So go uh, to admin up there. Yep. And so here you can go ahead and set. Now we were talking, several people were asking this question in talk group and chat earlier about talk groups. Phil is correct. <clears throat> frugal. I lad, we're frugal. I can squeeze a penny and make Lincoln cry. <laughs> um, so what you can do here is, um, and I don't think your Brandmeister connection worked, buddy. Okay. It should be it should be letting you change a talk group there. And this is the first time I've seen that repeater ID thing. Yeah, that, it adds change. it on. Yeah. Okay. So my brandmeister password didn't work. Let's find that. Because I have Brandmeister Manager showing. You're missing a dialog box there in the middle under admin. Yep. Yep. yep which yep. means that your password was wrong to the Brandmeister network. Ape, that is a good question. And I'm actually looking at that. I bought a rock pie the other day. Um I haven't I haven't played with it enough to know. It didn't seem to want to boot up. Um anything from the Raspberry Pi imager, even though it's an ARM processor. I downloaded a Rock Pi specific distro. I don't know about Orange Pi or Banana Pi. Yeah, they do, and Dirk's right. They do have, PyStar does have an Orange Pi and an Odroid image too, don't they? Yes, Rock Pi, James. They're the cheaper than a Raspberry Pi. They're um, they don't require two kidneys and a hand. They're about seventy bucks for the Rock Pies. It was in a weird spot. The um, yes. So go to. Password. Well, it's per hotspot. So go on the left side. Let me log into mine. It should My be on the left hotspot. side under hotspots and then click your hotspot and then you why. set your password there. Did you find That's it? Why. Yep. So the okay. reason why is because I did not have that um, hotspot ID number before. I never I never used it. Okay. Well, see, so yeah, you didn't know. I, I didn't. You don't have to use that if you have multiples, you want to use it. I'm still not seeing that um, that password thing. Ed, <laughs> package received, my friend. So I went over. Why, uh, why did it... You have to log in. No, it um, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I am logged in. I dragged a, a browser tab over there, and it decided it didn't want to be over there. All right, so I am logged in, and now I have these two hotspots over here. This is my old hotspot. 
Hmm. And I don't see... Oh, where, where is it? Okay, so maybe it's in your account. Go up to your account up there on the top right. Settings. Oh, settings. Page. Nope, nope. It, it's profile. Yep, profile there settings. You go. There you go. There it is. That password. This right one there. here? Yep. Yeah, see, I just changed this today. <laughs> Yesterday. success now that password needs to be what's in your i star where did my screen go oh, this is the one i am not holding ed's package ape i'm holding a package from ed i think we're going to, need to reboot this one more time shouldn't Jeremy's saying the password's fine. The DMR is in green in the status. It's the API key for the talk group manager. Do you have to do the API key? I remember doing that, but it's been so long. Is that why it won't let him change pass or change a uh, talk groups on the high star page? This is kind of ridiculous. 80 bucks a sheet. Blue. Dan Martin, 52074. Okay. I didn't remember that part. Go back to your Brandmeister page. You need to grab your API key, and you don't need to share that with everybody. Okay. <laughs> I need to create a new one because you can't see it. You can only. Okay. Well, that's fine. You, there's no penalty. Just create a new one. Okay. And then once you've got it, copy it and then uh, go to configuration expert MMDVM host, I think. And what this will allow you to do is disconnect talk groups that won't shut up. BM API. It's it's under expert. There it is, yeah. middle of the second row. No, 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 up up top. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, I forgot about this. Now change out your screen because you don't want to share your API key with all of us. I'm waiting for it to load up. There it is. That's a big that's a big box. So you want to stick it in that hole. Yes. Let's do that. Christiana, we're going to be on 52074. I and see feel some free to key of up over there and I'll join in when when I get there. Yep. I see several of you is out there. I see W1BUS, KE0LFX, K9WEN. Ben, uh, Ben, and Don were on there earlier today, as was Ron, and somebody. Okay, so I bet that was Michael. Doesn't show up with a call sign yet. So we got that all fixed. Five two zero seven four, and I want yep. to add that by yep. modifying static. Yep. You can also do that from your Brandmeister self care page as well, but this is infinitely uh, more convenient because you're already here. Yep. And then I'll go back to dashboard. All right. Light them up. Uh, all right. So let me see if I can remember how to do that. I think it's zero on your radio. Yeah. Five, two, zero, seven, four. Group call. And I just lit it up and it connected 0.4% BER, which is actually pretty good. I don't see you keying up here. You don't see me keying up there. Yeah, I see WE9U just keyed. 
Kilo Mike 9 Golf KM 9G. I just saw Walensky key up. Your call sign's not making it in down here, buddy. All right, let's let's continue this hero thing. I think they're hearing me. Somebody okay. just called. Yeah, I'm seeing all their call signs, but I'm not seeing yours. You are on the correct frequency, right? Yeah, I'm showing up on my own hotspot. Okay. Yeah, you are. Two. We got four minutes. Can we land this bird? Go to um, NAWCR. Yep, see if he can hear you. N8WCR. Hey, Ron, it's Steve. How are you doing? Guess you were too quick on the trigger because now you've shown up. Gotcha. You're coming in loud and clear. Hey. Yeah, going November. Sweet. Oh, I hear Bill in there too. Hey, Bill, how's it going? Don, it's 52074. W9, you listen. So we got her working. On the side. Excellent. Excellent. So at this point, that's how we do that. Bravo Uniform Sierra on the Toad Stock Group. Bueno. Okay. So Hang it on. also comes up on the display screen. Yes. Oh, look at that. KN4YCD testing the bridge. Bridge. No joy. Yeah. The bridge is still screwed up. I got to fix that tonight. So the YSF right now, <laughs> X, XRF 546 in D star. And Dirk figured part of this out for me last night. Um, he was doing a little hacksering and he's elite hacksaw because he figured this out. Our D star is actually XRF 546. And the YSF room is 52074 and it does show up in the pi star stuff now but it shows up with the name of ysf52074 and xlx546 instead of toads because reasons i don't know exactly all of them it still works it just doesn't have a cool name at the moment it changed because when the name got changed the ysf people renumber you based on your name and we went from the 84 to the 52 DMR is the same number. Um, it's kind of a self-assigned talk group number. And right now at this very second, the DMR people can talk to just the DMR and the YSF can talk to just the YSF and the D-Star can talk to just the D-Star. After we're done here, I know, it's not optimal. It is not really off-color joke in there. I'm not going to say it on stream. <laughs> come, come to the supporters only chat and we'll talk about That's it. That's right. Steve will share jokes. his dirty jokes later. We come no for the effects, technical but... and stay for the dirty jokes. And I need to fix the bridge part because that got broke yesterday in the process of the D-Star. Don't even ask. That's a long story. So when the bridge part is done, the software bridge, YSF and DMR will again enter talk. And it's been working up until I broke it yesterday while I was fixing it. Because I've talked to Don um, on there several times and I've talked to Ben and I know they're just... I know they're just doing DMR and I'm using fusion here mostly. And then I have the two dinguses take a shot. If you are holding out for that word, or if you have that selected in bingo, I have the two dinguses that we need to install. <laughs> and ultimately two dinguses. two dinguses, we will be transcoding from D star over to DMR YSF okay, in the next no, week or so. So where, were, where did you go to rotate the display? WA7PBE, welcome to the channel. New channel member. WE9U, I hear you loud and clear. Coming through just fine. You were talking about rotating the OLED display? So go to your configuration and go to expert. Configuration. Rotating the OLED display? 
Yeah, you're coming through finally on this transmission handling. Excellent. I can hear the stream delay coming over DMR. Right. Okay, so where are we at in here? Okay, so uh, go configuration expert. Why don't you pull that up on yeah, the screen? Echo, echo. Say it again, Jim. Go ahead and pull up the config page on share your screen out. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was sharing the screen still. No, we're looking at your pensive thinking TO face. I don't even want to categorize that look. All right. We'll do this real quick, then we'll get out of here. Where do we go? MMDVM host. And there's there's two things you need to consider in here that you may have to fool with. Number one is the rotation. So um, search for the word rotation because it's buried down toward the bottom of the page. Rotate. Change that to one and that will flip the display. So if you're on one of those like Steve has, it will be right side up when it's laying on the flat side of that hotspot as opposed to being right side up on the side with the plug in it. Not critical. You may not care. Just FYI. The other thing is go back up toward the top. We need to look for RX offset. That worked. Yeah. Okay. Search search for RX offset. Is Castler coming on next? I, is somebody scheduled after us? No, uh, John Cruck is on right now. So we're oh, gonna snap. Okay. Wrap it up. You may need to change these. If you have a high BER rate showing up on your dashboard, fiddle with RX offset first. Um, it can be a plus or minus value go in increments of 25 one way until it doesn't get any better and then try the other way. You want that BER below 1% if possible. And that's your bit error rate. That just requires some tinkering. So tool tips here. Okay, so that was PyStar Zero to Hero. For, in today's show, we went from imaging the SD card, booting up the software, finding it on your network and configuring it and then making contacts with each other towards the end of the stream. I didn't think we could make it in an hour, but we did. And uh, we did that with a very slow Raspberry Pi Zero. I recommend getting a Zero Two if you're shopping brand new, um, but it will work with any Raspberry Pi Zero, One, Two, Three, et cetera. So right. thanks for being awesome, everybody. Hate to wrap it up quick and leave, but we got a show coming on right after this. The link is pinned at the top of the chat over there and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.